This week, we are talking about stationarity in random processes and types of stationarity like stick sense or end order stationarity. And also the, the most important maybe of all of them, white sense stationarity. And we will also talk about independent and stationary increments property of some random processes. And we will touch upon uh, some types of random processes that are listed here. A random process is said to be stationary if the joint distribution of any set of samples does not depend on the placement of the origin. Okay, this is the definition, but what does this mean? If you look at the mathematical statement, we have a bunch of observation instance, and k here is the number of observations, and tau will be the shift amount of the origin, uh, and we have the joint CDF. Well, we could have defined this in terms of the PDF, but you, as you see, uh, the CDF is the most general of uh, distributions because you can account for uh, jumps and probability masses easier. Um, this is the CDF or joint CDF of the observations at T1, T2, T3 up to TK. And when you shift the origin, that means every observation gets shifted by the same amount. This is the amount of the shift uh, that you shift the origin. Therefore, every observation becomes x of t1 plus tau, x of t2 plus tau, etc., up to x of tk plus tau. If this joint CDF is exactly equal to this joint CDF for any choice of k, any number of observations, for any choice of observation points, for any choice of the amount of the shift, then we say that this random process x of t is stationary. Okay, as you see, this is a very uh, strict uh, definition. So it, not many processes satisfy this, but uh, this is the general definition of stationarity. And sometimes we also call this strict sense stationary or stationary in the strict sense, okay? In other words, the joint distribution does not change when observation points are all shifted by the same amount. So what does this mean? Let me show a simple example. Let's say you have three observations, T1, T2, T3. Okay, you observed the random process at these points and you have a certain joint distribution of uh, three random variables, x of t1, x of t2, x of t3. Now this is the origin, okay? So obviously this, uh, this length is t1, this is t2, this is t3. So what I do is I shift the origin, okay? Uh, let me shift this towards right. It could be towards right or left, doesn't really matter. As you see, tau can be positive or negative. So let me shift this to this point. So this now becomes, let's say this was the origin of uh, time uh, origin. And let's say this is my new origin. Okay, now T1 is somewhere here. It's not T1 anymore. It's T1 plus tau. Now tau in this case is negative. And this is T2 plus tau and this is T3 plus tau. So this is T1 plus tau. This is T2 plus tau. And this here is T3 plus tau. Okay, so my random process <clears throat> has a behavior in time. And I observe it at these points. And here I'm observing it at essentially a different set of three points. Here, here and here. Okay, so the joint distribution of these observations should stay the same. Another way to look at this is without touching the origin, I'm shifting my observation points by the same amount. So let me use another color here. <clears throat> Let's say I'm shifting T1 uh, to this point, T1 plus tau. This is a different tau now, okay? Let's say that this is T2 plus tau, but 
I'm shifting them all by the same amount. Okay, I'm not moving T1 by some tau and shifting T2 by some other amount. That's not it. <clears throat> okay, the shift amount should stay the same. And T3 becomes T3 plus tau. So I'm observing now at this point, this point, and this point. Okay. Therefore, the uh, now the joint distribution of these three samples should be the same with the joint distribution of these three samples. That is the idea. Okay. The critical thing here is you should observe um, the the separation between the time instance t1 to t2, t2 to t3, and here, of course, this amount here is still T2 minus T1, similar to this. And from this second observation point to the third one, it's still T3 minus T2 because I'm shifting them by the same amount, okay? Okay, so stationarity requires for any number of observation points, uh, any, any choice of observation time instance, the joint distribution of these observations should stay the same when either you you shift the time origin or you can see this as you shift every time observation by the same amount towards right or left doesn't matter okay <clears throat> this is the definition of stationarity uh, it, essentially we can say that for a stationary random process the nature of randomness in the process does not change with time so the nature of randomness essentially is what we mean uh, when, we, when we talk about the distribution because the distribution is the most precise thing to describe the nature of the randomness. Okay, and furthermore, we can also talk about joint stationarity when you have multiple random processes. Here in the definition, actually, we have two random processes, but in general, you can, uh, you can have more than two. You can have multiple random processes that are jointly stationary if they satisfy the same, uh, essentially the same uh, definition for any number of observation points, for any observation instance for both of the processes, for any amount of time shift, okay, the joint distribution of the time samples from random process X and random process Y at these time instance should stay the same when you shift uh, every observation point by the same amount. Okay, that is the definition of stationarity. 